Hey everyone, welcome to another video on my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to set up a very simple triple PoE server on a Microtech router. So to get started, I've got my virtual topology here. Um, we've got router one, which is going to be hosting the triple PoE server. And we've got C1, uh, AKA client one, which is going to be running a triple PoE client. We're going to go onto our R1 router and we're going to go firstly to IP and pool. So a triple PoE server needs a pool of IP addresses to assign to its clients. So similar to the way that a DHCP server would work. So we're going to click on the plus button and we're going to create a new pool. I'm going to name this pool uh, triple PoE underscore sub underscore pool. And the name is not really important. You can pretty much name that whatever you want. Uh, and I'm going to make the IP address and this is not super important. This is just the IP address that you want to assign to your customers. So this can be local, this can be uh, public. Uh, I don't have a block of public IP, so I'm just going to use local address for now. So 10.0, yeah, 10.0.0.100-10.0.0.254. So we're going to be handing out IP addresses between 100 and 254, I made a mistake there. And next pool, this is if you have, if you run out of IP addresses in this pool, you can assign a next pool, which will then automatically start handing out IP addresses from uh, the other pool that you make. So we could have two triple PoE sub pools, for example. Uh, so we're just gonna hit apply and then okay. All right, so we've got our uh, triple PoE IP pool setup, so we can close this. So the next step is to click on the triple P uh, menu item. Then we're going to go on to triple PoE servers. We're going to click on the plus button, and this is where we're going to actually create our server. So let's call this um, just for example, triple PoE underscore server. The interface. This is the interface that you're going to be assigning your server to because triple PoE is a layer two um, protocol. So it does need to have a physical interface assigned to it. So, so we're just going to assign this to ether one. And then I'm going to tick one session per host. This in combination with your caller ID is only going to allow uh, one client to use their triple PoE account. You're not going to run into issues where you have one account serving multiple people so or multiple routers. So we're just going to tick that. That's my recommendation. You can leave that unticked if you like. Uh, now I'm just going to click on OK. And that's it. We've made our server. So now that we've made our server, we're going to head over to the Profiles tab. And we're going to click on the plus button. And this is where we're going to create our profiles for our triple PoE uh, clients. Uh, and the profile is going to determine the speed that we give our clients as well as the pool that we start handing out um, IP addresses to those clients from. So I'm going to name this. Uh, we're going to make a 10 megabit per second profile. So let's do, let's name this one 10 slash 10 Mbps. All right. The local address is going to be 10.0.0.1. And their remote address, this is what's important, we're going to select our triple PoE sub pool. So now that's pretty much all we have to do on this page. We can leave everything else as default. Then what we can do is go to limits. And this is where we're going to actually set our limit to limit how much speed each customer on this profile has. So we're going to uh, limit this to 10M slash 10M, just like that. All right, so what's gonna happen when the customer dials up is a queue is actually gonna be dynamically created for their uh, triple PoE session and that's gonna, what, that's gonna be what actually limits their speed. So we've created our 10 megabit per second profile, we've created our triple PoE server. Now what we need to do is go into the secrets tab. Okay, so secrets are the essentially the account for your customers. So this is what's gonna determine their username and, and password as well as what profile they get put on and uh, so to do that, we're going to click on the plus button. Let's just name this test client. Okay, and the password will just make test. Uh, service, that's going to be triple PoE. The caller ID, we'll leave blank for now. We'll come back to that. The profile here, we're going to select 10 megabits 
the 1010 megabit per second profile. And now we're going to hit apply. All right. So that's pretty much all we have to do to create a server, to create the profiles and to create a customer. Uh, now this is where you would create more customers. So if I had, um, let's say I had 10 customers, we would have to go in here 10 times and create a, pro a secret for each customer. So let's now go on to the client's router. Okay. So we are on the C1 router and it's very simple to create a triple PoE client to dial up to the server. We go to triple P, we go to uh, the plus button on the interfaces and we click on triple PoE client. Okay. So triple PoE out one, that's what it's going to call itself by default. That's fine. Uh, it doesn't really make too much of a difference at all. Then interfaces, we're going to leave on ETH1, and I think I just made a quick mistake. Yep. Okay. So on my topology, uh, client one is actually connecting to R1 through ETH2. So let me actually go back onto R1 on the triple PoE server. I'm just going to change the interface to ETH2. So now C1 will be able to reach the triple PoE server. Okay. Sorry about that. So let's go back onto the client. Uh, the client's interface is going to be ETH1. The name is going to be triple PoE out one. That's fine. You can name that whatever you want. Okay. So dial out. This is where it's important. Under user, we're going to put in test client and the password, which was test. Okay. I'm going to tick uh, add default root and I'm going to, I'll show you how, what that does now. And I'm going to say use peer DNS. Okay. Now I'm going to hit apply and you can see link established. We can go into our logs and, uh, you can see here, I was just testing a few things, but if we look here, uh, there we go. Triple PoE out one initializing, connected, authenticated, oh, sorry, connecting, authenticated, and then connected. So that's the, uh, the process that uh, the triple PoE takes to dial up. Okay. So now that we connected, we can just hit okay. Okay. So now if we go check in IP addresses, you can see that we've been dynamically assigned a uh, 10.0.0.254 address out of the, out of the triple PoE IP pool. And because we had, um, the default root add default root selected, we can go to IP routes and you can see here that it's added a default root out of our triple PoE interface. Okay. Now we also had, um, use, uh, peer DNS enabled. So we can go to IP DNS and you can see that we're getting a dynamic DNS address from the upstream router. Okay. So if we just go to, um, the terminal and let's see if we can ping something out. So let's go ping google.com. And as you can see, that's working fine. So we are able to ping google.com and, um, I must just mention, obviously on the, uh, on the upstream router, I do have a little firewall address, um, a little firewall, uh, natting rule to net, um, to net the source address of uh, triple PoE subscribers. And you can also see here on the main router that a queue has been dynamically created for the user test client. Okay. Now something else that I wanted to just mention with the caller ID. If we go onto secrets and we click on our test client, you can see that the caller ID has not been set to anything. Okay. So what I recommend doing is just uh, setting the caller ID to the um, MAC address that the triple PoE client is sitting on, on your client router. So to do that, we can go onto the client router and we can just look at, uh, go onto interfaces. We know that the triple PoE client is busy sitting on ETH1. So we can open up ETH1. And here we can just copy the MAC address across, uh, onto the router, uh, the upstream router. And we can just paste that into the caller ID and we hit apply. Now what's going to happen is if somebody tries to dial up, um, using this person's triple PoE client, uh, firstly, we have only one session per host. And secondly, it's going to look to see what the caller ID is. And of course, if the caller ID doesn't correspond with that, then it's not going to allow the connection in. And I can just demonstrate this really quickly. I'm just going to shut this down uh, so that I can add another node. I'm going to add a node. It's going to be Microtech root OS. And we're just going to name this um, C2 for client 2. And let's say save. Okay, let's drag this in. 
And what we can do is just quickly delete the connection between R1 and C1. Let's connect C2 to R1's Ether2 interface. And we'll click Save. Okay, let's just start this up again. Let's just log on to C2 really quickly. It's showing me the license. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, so we're just gonna call this system. We're just gonna name this quickly, system uh, identity set name equals C2. Okay, let's just add a triple PoE client real quickly. So interface, PPPoE, PPPoE dash client, um, add, and now we can go to interface is gonna be ether one, and the user will be test client, Password will be, uh, what did we make it? Test. And then we'll say use peer DNS, yes, and set or add, sorry, default root, yes. And let's press enter. Okay, now we can go on to R1 again. Okay, so now you can see here. Um, I just had to go into the, uh, I wanted to show you guys the, the log info, but I forgot that in order to show that you actually have to go um, here onto system and logging and then you actually have to uh, click on the plus button here under rules and you have to select, if you want to see a specific info, like for example, triple PoE, uh, you have to actually go in and collect, uh, go and select triple PoE and then add that, uh, which I have now. So what you can see here now, it's just a small, little bit of security that you can add on. You can see the, the log info here, um, use a test client called from uh, the this MAC address here, um, but was expected from this MAC address here from the zero, because we can actually go and see again in the secrets that the that the secrets that the MAC, that the caller ID has actually been set to a different MAC address. So, so that's one way that you can, that you can actually create a small a small, a small little bit of security. Uh, obviously, it can be bypassed by the client, but uh, not now you can see if I actually disable the caller ID and I just click apply, you'll see that that customer actually uh, gets connected, no problem. So we can go here now and we can just go to interfaces and you can see that the test client actually connected up, no problem. Okay, so I'm just going to go back to the uh, previous topology, uh, stop selected, just so that I can jump onto Winbox on this nicely configured client one. And uh, let's just delete that and connect you back up here. Save. Oops, uh, I need to edit that actually. And we're going to be connecting, just connect him up here. All right, perfect, ether two to ether one. Okay, so let's head back on, let's restart this quickly, start selected, head on to Winbox and jump on here. I should be able to connect in a minute. Okay, so we're back on there. Uh, I'm just gonna connect to Roman on this other guy so that I can get onto the, onto the client. Connect to room on. All right, here we go. And let's jump on here quickly. Okay, cool. Okay, so now let's say for example, we uh, want to block a customer. Maybe they haven't paid, maybe they want to cancel the service, something like that. So what we could do is we can just go onto our triple P menu on the router that's hosting the server uh, that the client is dialing up to. We can then click on the secrets tab and we can just disable the client's account, all right? Once you've disabled that, we can go to interface, we can go and find their session and we can just remove their session. Okay, now you can actually immediately see here, uh, user test client authentication failed because it's now trying to dial up again and 
It's trying to use the details that uh, we put on the router, but you can see they have been disabled, so they can't dial up at all. And if we go on to the uh, C1, you can actually see here, um, oops, let's go down to the bottom. Triple PoE out one has been disconnected, failed to authenticate ourselves to the peer. And now this customer will be offline. They'll continuously try to dial up over and over again. Um, and you can see here that the status will just constantly change, uh, terminating, and it'll just go over and over again, try and dial up, but nothing will happen. Um, nothing will happen until we go back onto the router and uh, actually re-enable the, the server, uh, sorry, the secret of that customer. And then as soon as we do that, you'll see that the customer has reconnected up again. And yeah, so that's your very, very basic and simple triple PoE server. It is completely manual and there's, it's a very hands-on approach, but for a very basic and simple setup, this would work absolutely flawlessly. Um, obviously, you know, going forward, we will talk about radius integration and all of those kinds of things, but hopefully you found this helpful. If you do, please subscribe to my channel and drop a like on the video. If you have any queries, let me know down below in the comments and I'll do my best to assist.